We continue today with Chapter 5, The Guide to Salvation. The way to recognize your brother is by recognizing the Holy Spirit in him. I have already said that the Holy Spirit is the bridge for the transfer of perception to knowledge, so we can use the terms as if they were related, because in his mind they are. This relationship must be in his mind, because, unless it were, the separation between the two ways of thinking would not be open to healing. He is part of the Holy Trinity, because his mind is partly yours, and also partly God's. This needs clarification, not in statement, but in experience. The Holy Spirit is in is the idea of healing. Being thought, the idea gains as it is shared. Being the call for God, it is also the idea of God. Since you are part of God, it is also the idea of yourself, as well as of all his creations. The idea of the Holy Spirit shares the properties of all other ideas, because it follows the laws of the universe of which it is a part. It is strengthened by being given away. It increases in you as you give it to your brother. Your brother does not have to be aware of the Holy Spirit in himself or in you for this miracle to occur. He may have dissociated the call for God, just as you have. This dissociation is healed in both of you as you become aware of the call for God in him, and thus acknowledge its being. There are two diametrically opposed ways of seeing your brother. They must both be in your mind, because you are the perceiver. They must also be in his, because you are perceiving him. See him through the Holy Spirit in his mind, and you will recognize him in yours. What you acknowledge in your brother, you are acknowledging in yourself, and what you share, you strengthen. The voice of the Holy Spirit is weak in you. That is why you must share it. It must be increased in strength before you can hear it. It is impossible to hear it in yourself, while it is so weak in your mind. It is not weak in itself, but it is limited by your unwillingness to hear it. If you make the mistake of looking for the Holy Spirit in yourself alone, your thoughts will frighten you, because, by adopting the ego's viewpoint, you are undertaking an ego-alien journey with the ego as guide. This is bound to produce fear. Delay is of the ego, because time is its concept. Both time and delay are meaningless in eternity. I have said before that the Holy Spirit is God's answer to the ego. Everything of which the Holy Spirit reminds you is in direct opposition to the ego's notions, because true and false perceptions are themselves opposed. The Holy Spirit has the task of undoing what the ego has made. He undoes it at the same level on which the ego operates, or the mind would be unable to understand the change. I have repeatedly emphasized that one level of the mind is not understandable to another. So it is with the ego and the Holy Spirit, with time and eternity. Eternity is an idea of God so the Holy Spirit understands it perfectly. Time is a belief of the ego, so the lower mind, which is the ego's domain, accepts it without question. The only aspect of time that is eternal is now. The Holy Spirit is the mediator between the interpretations of the ego and the knowledge of the Spirit. 
His ability to deal with symbols enables him to work with the ego's beliefs in his, in his own language. His ability to look beyond symbols into eternity enables him to understand the laws of God for which he speaks. He can therefore perform the function of reinterpreting what the ego makes, not by destruction, but by understanding. Understanding is light, but you yourself do not know this. It is therefore the task of the Holy Spirit to reinterpret you on behalf of God. You cannot understand yourself alone. This is because you have no meaning apart from your rightful place in the Sonship, and the rightful place of the Sonship is God. This is your life, your eternity, and yourself. It is of this that the Holy Spirit reminds you. It is this that the Holy Spirit sees. This vision frightens the ego because it is so calm. Peace is the ego's greatest enemy because, according to its interpretation of reality, war is the guarantee of its survival. The ego becomes strong in strife. If you believe there is strife, you will react viciously because the idea of danger has entered your mind. The idea itself is an appeal to the ego. The Holy Spirit is as vigilant as the ego to the call of danger, opposing it with his strength, just as the ego welcomes it. The Holy Spirit counters this welcome by welcoming peace. Eternity and peace are as closely related as our time and war. Perception derives meaning from relationships. Those you accept are the foundations of your beliefs. Separation is merely another term for a split mind. The ego is the symbol of separation, just as the Holy Spirit is the symbol of peace. What you perceive in others, you are strengthening in yourself. You may let your mind misperceive, but the Holy Spirit lets your mind reinterpret its own misperceptions. The Holy Spirit is the perfect teacher. He uses only what your mind already understands to teach you that you do not understand it. The Holy Spirit can deal with a reluctant learner without going counter to his mind, because part of it is still for God. Despite the ego's attempts to conceal this part, it is still much stronger than the ego, although the ego does not recognize it. The Holy Spirit recognizes it perfectly because it is his own dwelling place, the place in the mind where he is at home. You are at home there too because it is a place of peace and peace is of God. You who are part of God are not at home except in his peace. If peace is eternal, you are at home only in eternity. The ego made the world as it perceives it, but the Holy Spirit, the interpreter of what the ego made, sees the world as a teaching device for bringing you home. The Holy Spirit must perceive time and reinterpret it into the timeless. He must work through opposites because he must work with and for a mind that is in opposition. Correct and learn, and be open to learning. You have not made truth, but truth can still set you free. Look as the Holy Spirit looks, and understand as he understands. His understanding looks back to God in remembrance of me. He is in communion with God always, and He is part of you. He is your guide to salvation, because He holds the remembrance 
of things past and to come and brings them to the present. He holds this gladness gently in your mind, asking only that you increase it in His name by sharing it to increase His joy in you. And from the workbook, Lesson 32. I have invented the world I see. Today we are continuing to develop the theme of cause and effect. You are not the victim of the world you see because you invented it. You can give it up as easily as you made it up. You will see it or not see it as you wish. While you want it, you will see it. When you no longer want it, it will not be there for you to see. The idea for today, like the preceding ones, applies to your inner and outer worlds, which are actually the same. However, since you see them as different, the practice periods for today will again include two phases, one involving the world you see outside you, and the other the world you see in your mind. In today's exercises, try to introduce the thought that both are in your own imagination. Again, we will begin the practice periods for the morning and evening by repeating the idea for today two or three times while looking around at the world you see as outside yourself. And close your eyes and look around your inner world. Try to treat them both as equally as possible. Repeat the idea for today unhurriedly as often as you wish as you watch the images your imagination presents to your awareness. For the two longer practice periods, three to five minutes are recommended, with not less than three required. More than five can be utilized if you find the exercise restful. To facilitate this, select a time when few distractions are anticipated and when you yourself feel reasonably ready. These exercises are also to be continued during the day as often as possible. The shorter applications consist of repeating the idea slowly as you survey either your inner or outer world. It does not matter which you choose. The idea for today should also be applied immediately to any situation that may distress you. Apply the idea by telling yourself, I have invented this situation as I see it. I have invented the world I see. So today's idea is a very strong support for the previous lesson. I am not the victim of the world I see. Because by saying, I have invented the world I see, it brings causation back to the mind, to the maker, to the maker of images. And you cannot be a victim of images if you are the maker of images. And this maker is, is not the Christ, but it is an attempt to miscreate using the mind of Christ, the mind that was given its reality 
by God. So it's a step. This is a step to reclaim the projections. Like in the movie Tron, the main character has to merge with Clue, a maker of a world, has to integrate and see that there is no external world, there is no external maker of the world. I have said often, if you spot it, you got it. And this is a version of this lesson for today. I have invented the world I see. This is a step in seeing the impossibility of projection. I've said before, the mind can either extend or project, but projection is the attempt to get rid of something that you do not want. And projection is always of the ego. Extension is a synonym of creation. God creates in spirit. Christ creates in spirit. And that is all. So, in coming back to creation, in coming back to spirit, we first withdraw the projection and state in our heart, I have invented the world I see. And this opens us up to the vision of Christ, to a state of mind that knows not of projection, and knows not of perception. A state of mind representing the idea, be still and know that I am God. A state of mind prior to perception prior to time, for as we read in the text today, the only aspect of time that is eternal is the present. And the Holy Spirit Jesus are in charge of the atonement. They know the way. They know the way inward to the kingdom of heaven. The Holy Spirit can use the symbols to teach the mind that it does not understand the symbols. That the mind will never find meaning in symbols. 
symbols are representations. But you have to want what they represent. If you want happiness, first the Holy Spirit will guide you to the real world, to true perception, to the happy dream. And in this state of perfect non-judgment, the symbols are not accorded different meanings or separate meanings. The symbols are seen to be all the same. And that's why Jesus asks us in his text, make this year different by making it all the same. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you the sameness of illusions the sameness of images. This is the forgiven world. And so in sincerity and in earnest anticipation, we practice with our lesson today. I have invented the world I see. <laughs>